Well, good day, Gold Country Baptist Church Internet family. It's good to be back with you. I trust that you and your families worshiped well yesterday, which was the Lord's Day. Thank you, Pastor Corey, for that wonderful word on the Word of God, uh, the love of God, and our responsibility to it uh, from 1 John. If you haven't heard that, you need to go back to Sermon Audio and listen to it. It was wonderful. As I was preparing for this devotion, it was uh, actually yesterday. It was the Lord's Day. It was very early in the morning. Uh, the sun had not yet risen, but uh, still the birds were singing outside my window, and it was glorious. And I was reminded of Lamentations 3, 22 and 23 that I know you know well. It says, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. And I love the fact our praise song doubles that. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. And it was a beautiful morning. So, and that was a great segue, is a great segue into uh, our devotional time today as we finish up the short series that we've been doing on, on Matthew 6. Today we will be looking at the last verses, verses 31 to 34. And you know, of course, if you've been watching the video series, if you haven't, I trust that you will go back and do that, that the subject of this very short portion of the Sermon on the Mount is titled, Be Anxious for Nothing. And thus far, in the first in the opening verses, from 25 to 30, um, Jesus reminds us that as God's creation unfolds right before our eyes, particularly now in the springtime, which it is, as I was seeing yesterday morning, we see, visually, we can see how God feeds the birds and he clothes the lilies of the field in wondrous color. And because we can see this, we can be assured that if he loves the birds enough to care for them. If he loves and creates beautifully the lilies of the field, uh, he will supply all of our needs in Christ Jesus. So we have nothing to worry about. But still, we are imperfect and weak men and women, aren't we? Um, and where uh, faith in God should be our go-to position, in fact, it should be our always position. Uh, we would like to always be living a life of faith uh, still, given, t given a, a time and certain circumstances, you and I can become as uh, those that Jesus addressed at the end of verse 30, as those with a little faith. So now in these last verses, Jesus gives us the antidote for worry and anxiety. He gives us the remedy for having a little faith. These are verses 31 to 34. Let me read them for you. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your Father in heaven knows you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of his God and his righteousness, excuse me, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added on to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. In these few verses, there's a very simple message for us, for, for you and I as believers in Christ. And, and, and this is it. We have no need to worry. We have no need to be anxious over anything. Because as children of God, our Father knows what we need even before we need it. In fact, He knows our needs even better than we know our needs, doesn't He? And we know from this and other passages and scriptures that we can be assured at, in fact, we read it just a minute ago, that as any good father cares for his children, our heavenly father will supply our every need, just as he has done for his people from the beginning of time. We are to be a people of faith whose hope whose assurance is found in a loving God and not like the Gentiles who, in this context, of course, are unbelievers who, whose only hope is in an uncertain and a, a chaotic and a very fragile world. Uh, as one pre, uh, pastor teacher wrote, they are ignorant of God's supply and have no claim to it. And that should break our hearts. But at the same time, it should challenge us to ever be proclaiming the gospel to our family and our friends and our neighbors, especially in these days, to those who have no hope in Christ, as you and I do. Uh, worry and anxiety come when uh, we have no recourse 
but to rely on the world for even our most basic of needs, a world system that is tenuous at best, even as we have seen in these recent days. Empty grocery shelves and, a, and our current overtaxed medical system are living proof that the world is in trouble. Mm -hmm. However, peace and contentment are found when we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, because all of these things will then be added to us. Friends, the world sees, uh, sees itself or has, uh, it views life in a couple different ways. Uh, one of those is that life is sort of accidental, that everything in life uh, just kind of happens by chance. There is no rhyme nor reason to it. And if there's no rhyme or reason to life, then there is no real purpose in life either, is there? At least no lasting purpose. How sad is that? And one of the other ways the world views itself is uh, in a fatalistic way. It's called fatalism, where nothing we can say or do is going to change anything anyway. It's the equivalent of the old Doris Day song. And yes, I know I'm probably dating myself, I will say. I was a little boy. But that little song, K sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. The future is not ours to see. That much is true. K sera, sera. The Urban Dictionary defines it this way. K sera, sera is something you say when you are stuck in a hopelessly unchangeable situation, but, ha but have come to accept or even embrace it. And that is very sad. Putting our hopes in chance is really putting our hopes in dumb luck. And casting all our hopes on come what may, like it or not, allows no room for hope at all. And they need to know, even as you and I need to be reminded often, that when we seek God, when we seek God's kingdom and his righteousness, we will find hope and certainty in Christ now and for all eternity. Friends, at the moment the Lord called you to himself and uh, you became the recipient of all his precious and very great promises and you received and you possess right now all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. And again, that is for today and forever. As believers, worry is simply a waste of time. Why worry about what is certain? Worse yet, anxiety distracts and derails us from seeking that which we should be seeking in the first place, and that is the kingdom of God, where we find purpose in life and with it peace and contentment through Jesus Christ. This is uh, Then there is one last, do not be anxious, and that is found in verse 34. It says, Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. And that is a very interesting uh, couple of sentences there. I'll let you uh, study them more deeply at another time. But for now, it is simply encouraging us, it is exhorting us to not worry about tomorrow, to not worry about the future. If God is the God of today, then he is the God of tomorrow as well. And in fact, he is the God for all eternity. So let me leave you with just a couple last verses for you to meditate uh, on this coming week. And it is this. If we are to seek first the kingdom of God, uh, we need not be anxious for what we shall eat or what we shall drink. Because Jesus said in John 6, 33 to 35, For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. Whoever believes in me shall never thirst. And we don't have to worry about what we shall wear, as we join with the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 61.10, when he wrote this, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul will exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation, he has covered me with the robe of righteousness. So we close out this passage with what a passage we have seen before already, uh, but it sums up this study very well, and I'd like to share it with you one, that, uh, one more time as we close. This is 2 Corinthians 4, 16 to 18. Listen carefully to this. So we do not lose heart, 
Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light, momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen, that is the things of God, are eternal. So look for another devotional series to begin soon. Until then, may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times, in every way. The Lord be with you all. And all God's internet family said, Amen. Amen.